On today's Go, we're going digital. Welcome to another episode of Go. I'm your host, Vanessa Ibera. Well, on today's show, we're coming to you from the Canadian Internet Marketing Conference here at the West Coast Railway Heritage Park. Now, if you're a business owner looking to expand your brand online, or you're simply on Facebook or Twitter and looking to up your likes, this is the event for you. On today's show, we're talking to its founder on what this two-day event is all about, and also speaking to a Canadian airline representative on how they've managed to expand their brand. On today's show, we're also going a little foodie. We're going to visit a yummy olive oil shop in Whistler and also tell you about a chocolate shop in Squamish, sweetening locals' taste buds. So let's start the show. With the all-star wrestling match recently come into Squamish, we talked to one of its wrestlers on how he's inspiring kids to soar to new heights. His name runs through his blood. My name's Andy the Dreadful Bird. Just get myself prepped and ready to go for a step in the ring and do some battle. This rebellious bird has been traveling the Western Canada wrestling circuit for over five years. His personal idols, about as close to the heart as you can get. Got a little bit of my hero here and Brett the Hitman Hart on the shoulder pads. I've got the macho man Randy Savage, ooh yeah, with the tassels. I'm feeling great, ready to go. Let's fly. All-Star Wrestling Tour has been coming to Squamish for well over a decade. Every year, the Sea to Sky's biggest fans come to check out BC's best talent, including Andy, who's tonight's guest wrestler. Uh, we're very excited to see it. Yeah, it looks great. I think it's great to come and see all these like new guys, you know, just wrestle. I like the action pretty much. I think we got 12, maybe 14 wrestlers tonight. Let's wrestle! I've wrestled Andy myself years ago. I thought, hey, we're going to Squamish and it'd be great to have Andy there. A minute into the match, it's clear All Star is all about entertainment. A chance for fans of all ages to escape and simply be immersed in over the top action. What these fans may not know, though, is wrestling has provided a different kind of escape for Andy. I grew up with my mom. I've lived in probably 26 different places. This reserve, one of the many the wrestler grew up in, in and around Saskatoon. With not much to do, the young boy turned to wrestling for entertainment. We'd sit down and we'd watch Monday Night Raw every night. I loved the underdog aspect. There was always a hero, so my hero was Brett, the Hitman Hart, uh, my idol. By the age of 20, Andy left the reserve for good and began professional wrestling in Calgary and Vancouver. Today, the 26-year-old has over 300 matches under his fluorescent belt, not to mention a wife who's expecting their first child. It just goes to show that you can do anything. I'm a little native boy who was raised in Saskatoon, Saskatchewan by a single deaf mother, um, homeless at 14 with an alcoholic father and had dreams of being a professional wrestler. Everyone told me I couldn't do it. Here I am. The Squamish Show's proceeds is also going towards the Bird's Nest, a nonprofit organization that Andy recently started up, helping adults such as himself leave their reserves to find a better life in BC. Andy's using his name as a wrestler to help better the people in his community. And that's, that's, that's great that he's doing that. He may crush opponents for a living. But it's clear there's a soft side to this dreadful bird. Andy's hope that like him, these kids are inspired to take life into their own hands. Anything is possible. It doesn't matter where you've come from, who you are. You want something, go out and get it. Wrestling Tour comes to Squamish every year, but if you want to check out the next one, it's happening May 27th in my hometown of Cloverdale, so check it out. 
Okay, well, I'm here with Chris, Christian Thompson, who's a founder of CIMC. Uh, oh, we're here already, eh? another year later. Yeah, I can't believe it. Sounds yeah, fun, eh? yeah. So tell us, uh, we covered last year's event, but what's this year in particular all about? Uh, so this year is uh, again digital marketing. We have some awesome speakers from Disney, Google, WestJet, Talos. Like the list is uh, extensive, and they're all sharing marketing insights into the the trend for the next next year. Yeah, so what's the main marketing insights that, you know, that's going to be covered in the next two days just when it comes to tips for online? What can people take away? It's pretty varied. Um, it, everything from social media marketing to influencer marketing and um, how maybe technology is driving a lot of the marketing platforms. Right. Uh, so yeah, it's super cool. Totally, and it's kind of neat. You've tripled your attendance from last year, you're saying. That's right. People yeah. come in from as far as Spain. Um, what do yeah. you think is drawing like, a lot more people this year? I think the, the quality of speakers and also the, the, the mountain retreat style um, conference. Like It's not a typical hotel room in uh, some airport hotel. It's a, it's a, it's a cool venue and, a, and Squamish is beautiful as well. Is that what you find most people also afterwards are going out? They're also oh, you know, yeah. hiking? Biking and, and hiking and climbing and staying for the weekend. And, yeah, yeah, everyone yeah. wins. Oh, yeah. Um, so the main thing, though, what do you think people are struggling with today online? You're obviously an expert with your company and digital marketing, but what's the main challenge for today's companies? Uh, I think keeping up with all the changes is probably their biggest struggle. Yeah. <laughs> I, know, I, I struggle too, so I can't, you know, if you're a, like a landscaper or a realtor, it's going to be pretty hard to stay up to date, but if you do stay up to date, there's a ton of opportunities to get ahead of the competition. Totally. Yeah. Okay, well thanks for joining me, hey, Christian. You're welcome. Appreciate it. While it may be being used as a social media hub today, the rest of the year, the West Coast Railway Heritage Park is used as a place to tour antique trains. And I just so happen to have also gotten a peek. Let's take a look. In 1885, the last spike was laid on the Canadian Pacific Railway, and Canada was never the same. Here at Squamish's West Coast Railway Heritage Park, over 85 trains having helped transport people, as well viable resources such as wheat out west, now sit proudly parked on its 12-acre site in what remains Western Canada's largest heritage railway collection, one that I'm excited to tour today. Hi there! Hi, how are you? Good, you must be Johnny Jealous. I am. The one and only. One and only, and welcome to the West Coast Railway Heritage Park. And Having worked over 35 years as a conductor for BC Rail, Johnny lives and breathes trains. The heavy duty equipment, it, it intrigues me. Uh, I like to be around it. Now, we have the Royal Hudson here, and... The retiree, one of 20 volunteers spending years restoring these BC beauties to, if not beyond, their original condition. Our first stop, the Royal Hudson. Built in 1940, this steam engine locomotive is one of five having been preserved in Canada. She was used in the early days for passengers uh, from Vancouver to Revelstoke. The actual steam is built from a firebox to a steam that comes all through the top here. It comes down to here to the pistons. Yeah, it's amazing. It reminds me of what you see in movies. You know, it's not just a piece of transportation. It's a piece of art. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. With steam engines requiring constant care, for railway workers, switching to diesel by the late 50s only made sense. It takes more energy to run a steam engine than it does to run a diesel locomotive because you had to build up steam. You had to stop for water all the time. That takes up time. On running on a railroad, it's time is money. And welcome to the British Columbia, ladies first. Oh, of course, thank you. So Speaking well. of money, next we climb aboard the car British Columbia. Oh, wow. Oh, isn't this cute? At over 125 years old, this luxury coach took park volunteers over 10 years to restore. The woodwork that's been done in the inside, like the inlay wood from the early days, if you built something like that today, it, you couldn't afford to do it. Passengers eating and sleeping for up to seven days aboard the posh vehicle, with the most upper elite enjoying extra special luxuries. And with that, it was on to our last stop of the tour this 18th century wooden caboose, especially close to Johnny's heart. This is where the conductor, this was his office as well as his away from home. The tail end brakeman would sit up in the cubicle and watch the train to make sure there was never any fires on the side of the train. Would we find something similar like this today or is it really kind of evolved for uh, conductors? No, a conductor today will be riding with the engineer on the locomotive 
and the engineer and the conductor would be going to a hotel. While the railway park relies heavily on volunteers as well community donations to breathe new life into these trains, for Johnny, it's a job he would do for free either way. It's a labor of love is what it is. It would be a wonderful thing even for the people of like our town of Squamish. If we had a passenger train that could run between Vancouver and here and all over Canada, if we had small railways to do this, it would open our country up even more. This conductor's passion and appreciation of the railway world, one that like him, never gets old. I'm 70 here in another month and I feel like I'm 18. Stick around because after the break, we give our taste buds a treat in Whistler. Folks come in and they can actually try the products straight from the spout. Welcome back from the break. Well, on today's call, we're here at the Canadian Internet Marketing Conference, where over 50 names from some of the top companies have come to speak about everything social media. And joining me right now is uh, Greg with WestJet. You're speaking at the end of the day, you mentioned. I am, I am. I'll be closing it out today. Best for last. <laughs> well, so they say. So uh, what will you be speaking about today in particular? Uh, today we're going to talk a little bit about the evolution of our Christmas Miracle campaign. So giving a peek behind the curtain as to what goes on behind the scenes, you know, sharing some best practices, a few unique numbers, and uh, some pretty interesting stories as well that have come along the way. Well, let's look forward to it. And yeah, so you guys are big on the YouTube videos. I know it's the last year, the mini miracles, and also that April Fool's prank of the robot bringing right, your food. Right, right. Um, so what kind of led to just this going online and doing these campaigns? Uh, kind of a natural progression. Um, initially with the April Fools, that was more of a PR stunt traditionally done through a press release uh, that we'd issue, but you know, as technology evolves, um, so does the conversation, and that conversation translates online. So just really finding uh, that sweet spot for our market in terms of our conversation, our culture, our people, and uh, using them as an extension of our brand and uh, as a, you know, a natural amplification. Well, it's the best way to reach people, it seems, for any company, airlines, totally. anything else. I mean, our people are our brand. They live, eat, and breathe it every day. Um, so they're the best ambassadors when it comes to it. We use West Jetters in you know, any piece that we do. And um, you know, it's been really our, our bread and butter and really a point of differentiation for us in terms of allowing our brand to be true to itself and authentic, which has been a big buzzword here. Authentic, um, yes. yes. Authenticity online. Exactly, and also, um, you know, that the E word engagement. Um, you know, that's super important to us, whether that's online, whether that's in our airports or in flight. Uh, that's a piece that resonates through. It. And what does that mean? Like you said, that's a buzzword here. We're hearing all about be authentic online. So, what does that mean to WestJet and maybe others who could take advice? Um, you, you know, it's it's such a. It, it's a great question uh, because it's unique to every brand in that sense. So for us, it's the that care element. So our caring culture, the care our people give to our guests. Um, so for that, if you look at you know our social team and you know their response times in terms of how they're helping people out, whether that's the ease of booking a flight, so the user experience online, and then you know that surprise and delight piece, which you know shines through either our sponsorship properties or our XM components that we do. Um, you know, there's a lot of touch points along the line that we can insert our care into it, and that's that is who we are. Hey, we're doing a great job, so good luck on today's presentation. Well, thank you very much. All right, thanks, Greg. No problem. All right, well, let's start to our next story of the day here on Go Up in Whistler. With it now being the shoulder season, now is the best time to reacquaint yourself with the stores in Whistler Village. Well, it turns out there's one up-and-coming olive oil shop in town that's lifting the veil on the industry. Olive oil, one of mankind's first cooking ingredients used as far back as 3000 BC. It's clear, almost tasteless substance, one the majority of consumers have come to expect. That is until stepping foot inside olives on tap in Whistler. We call it a tasting room or tasting bar. Do you know which balsamic you're after? Folks come in and they can actually try the products straight from the spout. That's awesome. Once uh, folks decide on a product in store, they choose their bottle size. We fill it up, and once it's filled, we fire a label on there as well so they know what their crush dates are and their chemistry. Persian lime and peppery grass, just two of over 25 olive oils, along with balsamic vinegars, offered at the newly opened Whistler Village store. Each calculated creation shipped in from olive farms around the world. A business idea that for Andrew Cameron was love at first sip. 
first olive oil tasting room in all of Canada was in Halifax, Nova Scotia, where I'm from. I thought olive oil was tasteless and bland until I stepped into the store and started trying them. They're peppery, they're fruity, they're, they're spicy. There's so many different fruit contexts that, that come to life. A surprise that turns out he wasn't alone in. As olive oil ages, whether from overheating, the sun, or simply time, it loses its valuable antioxidants and flavor. However, with expired oil still edible, the kitchen staple remains the number one unregulated product on grocery shelves. They're looking for higher yields uh, to make more money. The problem is they drive the price point of oil down and it makes it harder for farmers who are actually kind of following the rules. If it's refined, you've lost all the all the good stuff, you're kind of having a, a neutral or maybe even less than neutral product. And it isn't just olive oil. Turns out many makers are also adding molasses or brown sugar to wine vinegar to pass as balsamic. For Andrew and the now over a dozen olive oil shops in BC, putting an end to the corrupted industry begins with awareness. A good oil should actually be peppery, it should be bitter, it should be pungent, and it should have a fruit context. Something I had to try for myself. So Andrew, what's this one I'm about to try here? So this is a mild Arbisana from California. Easy going, not too much bitterness, not too much spice. Okay, let's try this here. I'm almost getting a hint of, initially I thought nut, but what is that? Yeah, it's kind of a green almond or a, even kind of almost a bit of a green banana flavor to that one. Yeah, that's amazing. Next up, grass infused extra virgin olive oil. Mm, nice and subtle. That subtlety about to be kicked up a notch. Olives on tap also injecting bold flavors such as pomegranate, chocolate, and blueberry into their vinegars. Here we go, this is blueberry. Oh, that's amazing. That's really good actually. <laughs> With Olive on Tap's Whistler and North Vancouver location also offering group tastings, it's the continued reactions such as myself, Andrew has come to expect and thrive on. A lot of the time they go, I can't believe it can taste so good. So do you want a white instead of a dark? I'm hoping that people continue to get educated and that the industry continues to make better products. I think a lot of people on the ground uh, in retail shops are really trying to get the education out there to say, here's what to look for. Medical studies show consuming as little as one to two tablespoons of olive oil a day can decrease your chances of a stroke, also heart disease, and other ailments. So I'll uh, cook to that. Well, speaking along the theme of healthy foods, also turns out chocolate can be good for you. Yeah, hard to believe. They say if you eat one to two cubes a day of cocoa chocolate, you can also decrease your chances of a heart attack, stroke, and it's also loaded with antioxidants. So good news as well. Well, sticking with the theme of chocolate, there's a shop here in town that's been treating people's taste buds for years. And turns out there's a new chocolatier in the mix bringing a whole new flavor to the bowl decadent. For most, it's a savory treat. For Kevin Young, it's life. It's kind of amazing that I could be doing this for a living at 20. Shoko West Coast Chocolates is Kevin's very own chocolate shop here in downtown Squamish. We offer everything from uh, little uh, molded and enrobed bonbons to bigger molded solid chocolate, as well as pastry and baking. This is our lavender and honey ganache, um, a local honey, uh, really floral, really nice. And this one's a white chocolate coconut caramel ganache, and then a dark chocolate black sesame duja. Like most North American kids, Kevin grew up eating chocolate. Every Easter, every Valentine's Day, every Christmas, Lucky for him, his treats were always homemade. That's because growing up, Kevin's mom also had her own chocolate shop. This one, right here. Yes, it was in this very kitchen that the then young boy had his first taste of chocolate. When he wasn't eating, he could usually be found sitting on the counter or peering over his mom's shoulder, watching her work her magic. And then... When I was five, my, my mom sold uh, her shop. Determined to pursue his own career in chocolate making, Kevin enrolled in the Pastry Training Center of Vancouver in his late teens. I learned a lot of new techniques, especially when it comes to the look of chocolate. In 2015, the then 19-year-old was inspired to open his own shop, and so he did a complete role reversal, buying back his mom's business, hiring her on as partner. Now I'm his assistant. We're a bit of a chocolate family. He's taken the chocolate on completely. For Kevin, it was important to have a modernized, fresh start to him and his mom's shop. 
one of their changes being incorporating as many local products as possible into their sweets. Fresh fruits, local distilled liquor, locally blended tea. We make our own nut paste, our own caramel. When you have these chocolates, each one, the texture and the mouthfeel is quite different. That wouldn't have been the same with my chocolates. But for this chocolate maker, taste is not enough. The visual of chocolate is so important when eating it. This is a really cool chocolate. It's our Blue Universe chocolate. For every batch of chocolate Kevin makes, such as these Blue Universe treats, he takes the time to meticulously dust, as well dip and paint each piece. Long hours, but well worth it. It's beautiful. With this duo's revamped business now a year old, there's only one word to describe the experience. Amazing. Working alongside your mom five days a week? <laughs> Sorry, one sec. Most of the time we agree. For him, I've just watched his craft develop over the last few years. It's quite amazing. I wouldn't have been able to do it without my mom. She's really the only reason that I'm able to do this. We talk every single day, every single night about chocolate. We're better friends than we've ever been. I may have eaten one or two chocolates during that shoot, but hey, someone's got to do it. All right, well now it's time for our destination BC story. The Caribou Chilcolton region is a land without limits, a melting pot of three different worlds all ingrained into one region. Desert canyons, they also have evergreen timberlands, ranch lands, grasslands, ocean fjords, and of course the mountains. Embrace the wild and visit the Caribou region. My grandfather was a pilot. I never got a chance to meet him. I wish I could have gone for a ride with him. He was an avid lover of the outdoors. He was an adventurer. He loved to explore. And so I like to think that I have a little piece of that in me as well. Oh, for me to come up here, it's amazing. It's like the true ranch land in BC, where the real cowboys are still living and working their ranches that have been passed down in generations. To be able to come somewhere like this and get on a horse and then explore through the bush, up a mountain, around a lake, and have the horse take you there. It's hard to explain, it's amazing. You know, the people that live here, I think very much represent what this place is about. So seeing it through their eyes. I love it, it's so awesome. For my grandfather, this place held everything that he loved and that he was passionate about and the things that he wanted to share with his family. And now seeing this place for the first time, it is wild. It's showing you a whole new side of yourself that you never knew was there. So many fascinating places to visit in BC. Really, really cool. Gotta hit some of those. All right, well, uh, that pretty much wraps up our show. Joined once again by Christian. Um, Christian, you mentioned, I can't believe it already, you've released the dates for next year's event. That's right. Yeah. Guys, you know, online people are crazy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're keen. Yeah, so uh, tell us the details about that one. Yeah, so um, it's gonna be at the beginning of April, and we're getting bigger and better again. We just, we've set the challenge to ourselves. Uh, some awesome speakers for 2017 from IBM and Pixar and uh, again, yeah, trying to do our best in that. Okay, something to look forward to. And uh, if people want to check out uh, pics from the two-day event, how do they go about that? Yeah, so a couple of ways. Probably one of the uh, most insightful ways is to look up the hashtag CIMC2016 okay. or visit digitalbuzz.ca. Okay, well, thanks once again for hey, joining no me. Look forward to well, next year. Okay, well, that wraps up our show here on Go as well. If you want to check out all of our pictures from our shows and daily events, 
You can also visit us on Twitter at uh, Shaw TV Seat to Sky and also check out our YouTube channel and the link is on the bottom of the screen. Until next time, happy tweeting.